when doing a little bit of research before doing this review over The Last Wish by Andres Sapowski. I might be butchering that name, I apologize if I am. I came across some other uh, reviews and um, a lot of people complained over the fact that it was a series of short stories. That I knew that going in um, and I'm not going to necessarily knock it out for that. I don't particularly enjoy books that are a series of short stories, but they can be done right just like Ranger's Apprentice, The Lost Stories. Um, to go and knock it down much more than just a single star, um, wouldn't really be reviewing the book, it'd be reviewing that style of writing. So I don't feel it would be fair to say, hey, I don't like the style of writing, the book's awful. The book may be fine, but the style of writing might not. So I can, I can review and chastise the author's choice for that style of writing, but by chastising the style of writing itself, it wouldn't be fair to say, hey, this is a bad book. But anyway, it actually wasn't. Um, I quite enjoyed the book, um, even with it being short stories. My problem with short stories is that they're hard to get into. The story starts, you start reading it, you get a little bit into it, and like that, it's over. So that can make it difficult to make the book a page turner. Um, and that's kind of what I felt about this book. At certain points, I wanted to pick it up and keep reading and keep reading and never uh, put it down. Uh, other points, I didn't really care to pick it back up simply because I had just finished a story and it was almost like starting a whole new book. But that didn't stop me from enjoying the book as a whole. My biggest problem with The Last Wish was that the author drops you into the story with absolutely no introductions to characters, settings, theme, place, or any other sort of filler. While it's a bad idea to give your reader an info dump, some amount of information and introduction is certainly required, and I simply didn't receive that. Now this very well could be because while chronologically The Last Wish is the first book, I take that back. Actually The Season of Storms is the first book. It was recently translated to English, but um, so technically chronologically The Last Wish is the second book. It was, I believe, the sixth book written. While the author may have introduced the characters very well in the first book, which would have been The Blood of Elves, we didn't get that here. And I feel like it was it really should have been introduced again, simply because chronologically it comes before The Blood of Elves, so we might need an introduction beforehand. Now I'm very much aware that the author may have figured, hey, you know what, they've probably read all my books that, um, up to this point, so there's, this will actually be going back. However, for me and other new readers, this creates a, a huge problem. We don't really know who anybody is. What little knowledge I had on the characters was from um, my playthrough of The Witcher 3 video game, which is not how it should be. I shouldn't be forced to get my character introductions from an outside source. I should be able to get them from within the series itself. My hopes, though, is that I will get a better introduction with The Blood of Elves since it was technically written first. The book starts with Geralt in some sort of temple. He's recovering from wounds uh, from an um, unmentioned fight, and it wasn't until actually I was doing some research for this review that I discovered that the entire book and all the series of short stories is actually Geralt just telling the priestess who is looking after him some of his adventures. I didn't realize that that's what they, what was going on. I thought the stories were happening in a quote-unquote live action. And this actually explains quite a bit to me. Um, at certain points the stories seem to go in a chronological order. They may not be directly tied together. However, one story may happen and then the next story Takes, that takes place after it might happen chronologically right after it. Um, but at other points it didn't, and this created some confusion to me. I had to go into this next story wondering, hey, does this take place right after the story before it? Does it tie into it at all? And other times it didn't. So either one would have been fine, but I felt like they either should have all taken place right after each other or none of them should have. Having some do it and some not created a certain amount of confusion and extra effort on my part to read into it to try to figure out if, in fact, this was taking place directly after the previous story or if it was something completely different. The book itself was um, quite a bit slower than I expected. I had been expecting a quite fast-paced, action-packed book, and it wasn't, but that's not to say it was bad. Um, the book was mostly dialogue with very little action, and normally I chastise this um, sort of writing. I, I don't particularly like books that are all dialogue. I like to see action and description. However, since this was just a series of short stories, it wasn't too bad. Um, I also normally chastise for a lack of imagery and description, but again, since it was mostly dialogue, 
and the dialogue was okay simply because it was a series of short stories. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock it down quite as much as I would have had this been a, a solid um, one piece story. Many of the reviews that I read while doing research for this actually complained about the dialogue. Not so much its frequency, but rather its format. Now, dialogue's tricky. Um, you can't write dialogue the way we actually talk. If you did, it would be a mess. Uh, humans tend to interrupt each other quite a bit. They pause randomly. They say, um, uh, but, like, and have all these sort of interjections. We often use words incorrectly and change topics without a notice. So dialogue would be a mess if we wrote it the way we actually spoke. However, it does need to be somewhat realistic when you read it. So you don't want to write it without contractions because then you get a very robotic sounding dialogue and it doesn't sound natural, it doesn't flow. However, the further you go towards realistic, the more difficult it is to follow and understand a dialogue, usually. So I don't really have a problem with Sapowski's use of dialogue. It is a little bit more on the realistic side and therefore a little bit harder to follow, but it seems to flow very well. Um, there were a couple of lines I had to reread to understand what was going on, but the biggest problem I actually had with it was that at certain points I had to go back and reread the entire page to figure out who was saying what line. There are different points where there would be a series of uh, dialogue exchanges and we weren't told who was saying which line, which isn't necessary for every line, but you need to do it at least every few lines so we can keep everything in track. So I was forced to go back and put my finger on the first line, like, all right, he said this, this person said this, and then just follow. So I knew every other one was what, um, who was saying it. I feel like if I have to do that, then you need to put an identifier in there. I shouldn't have to go through and follow along each line with my finger to make sure I know who's saying what. So what about some, um, good things about the book because there are certainly plenty as i said in the beginning i enjoy the book as a whole and i would recommend it as far as the setting for this book i do enjoy how sapowski put a uh, twist on your traditional sword and sorcery mainly because it really wasn't your traditional sword and sorcery style of setting um it wasn't it's a fairly soft magic system but it's got a little bit more um set rules to it than your traditional sword and sorcery might have um the book did provide a bit deeper look into Geralt than what I had known from The Witcher 3 video game. However, it didn't provide that much of a deeper uh, look into him as a, as a person. Um, it did explain how Geralt and Yennefer met, which I really enjoyed. Um, that was probably my favorite story within this book. It had some really good humorous moments that actually made me laugh out loud. And, but it didn't interrupt the um, flow of the story, I think. So I think the humor was used pretty well within this book. There was some description of nudity in this book, but it, um, it was said so nonchalantly that it seemed natural. It didn't seem out of place. Um, however, there was one particular scene uh, where, uh, I won't go into too much detail for, to, for the sake of avoiding spoilers. There was one point where the author referred to this girl's breasts so much that I no longer felt that girl was a powerful witcher with mutations that affected his emotions, but instead a 14 year old pubescent boy. Um, but for the most part, the nudity was done in a manner that was, uh, wasn't unnatural. So as I said, I like the book as a whole and I certainly would recommend it. Um, I've started reading the second one, or technically the third one chronologically, uh, The Sword of Destiny. Um, and I'm really excited to get to the actual novel set, the starting with the Blood of Elves. Um, and I'm going to continue with this series and I'm excited to see how it turns out and hopefully some of these issues that have arisen mostly due to uh, the books being written out of their chronological order and the fact that um, it was a series of short stories. Hopefully it'll fix some of those issues and I'll come to enjoy the book even more. Anyway, um, I will leave a link to where you can purchase The Last Wish in the description and uh, I'll also leave a link to where you can purchase my book After the Last Battle in the description. As always, thank you for watching.